NASCAR's most popular driver, Chase Elliott, wins at NASCAR's most popular track, Talladega, in one of the best Talladega races I have ever seen. Let's talk about it. Hello everybody, welcome to Dirty Air. I'm your host Alex Lambert and let's talk about a fantastic race at Talladega. One of the one of my favorite races that I've ever watched at this racetrack in recent years. A great race, Chase Elliott with his fifth win of the season, ensuring that he is still the championship favorite after a rocky start uh, to his playoffs. But let's talk about it. And I want to, before we before we look at what Chase Elliott did, the fantastic move he made at the end of the race, before we talk about what happened to the playoff drivers today and what they did, let's just take a step back and look at the big picture of this weekend for NASCAR. We had a, a terrible last couple of weeks with tire problems at Bristol, major tire problems at, at Texas and safety concerns. We had a driver get injured in a wreck last week. He's out right now due to concussion-like symptoms. We've had a driver out since the summer portion of the schedule when Kurt Busch wrecked at Pocono uh, and a qualifier crash. We has not been at the racetrack since that crash, which is really unfortunate. So leading up to this race, there was a lot of headlines. NASCAR was in the news making headlines really for all the wrong reasons. They were talking about how there's safety concerns, how the drivers might not be safe right now, how NASCAR needs to fix this next-gen car. And I know NASCAR, I saw where they were on a clip for Good Morning America. They've been on other news sites uh, talking about the safety so a big audience today, we, we get the race on Big NBC, it starts at 2 o'clock, I, I like the early start times by the way, so we started this race right at 2 o'clock, like 2.05 was the green flag, uh, so not a whole lot of waiting around for those fans um, uh, that don't tune in every week, uh, that just tune in for the NBC races at Talladega, it looked great, we didn't see any big crash at the end, it didn't look sloppy, it didn't look dangerous, look, we saw, we saw one wreck at the beginning of the race on lap 24, it was a... Fairly tame wreck, not a huge crash with a bunch of the front runners, and that was it. We didn't see any big wrecks. We didn't see any any mistakes made by any drivers the rest of the way. That is a great race, a fantastic race. And we still got an entertaining race. You know, it wasn't it wasn't boring. It wasn't a a train race where the drivers just follow the leader. It was a really good race with a lot of passing and a lot of aggressive moves, and we saw driver talent excel. And in this case, Chase Elliott made the right move and won the race. Fantastic race tonight from Talladega, or today from Talladega, and uh, I'm really impressed by how it looked. It didn't look dangerous or anything like that, so on a week where NASCAR has been making headlines for the wrong reasons, it probably got some people to tune in to see what would happen, and I think it looked fantastic, and hopefully those fans tune in uh, for the rest of the season, which will be on NBC, by the way. Uh, and we also got some great post-race show. Now, NBC does a great job of the coverage. I just wanted to mention that. NBC did a fantastic job today. They had a lot of commercials in this race, especially at the end, but they were side-by-side -side commercials. I don't think there were any full-screen commercials in, in the in final half of the race. Uh, if there were, I didn't notice it. It was not aggravating watching the commercials today at Talladega, so props to NBC as well for having great coverage. A great weekend for NASCAR as far as the, the broad picture, the production team, and the way everything played out. A, a huge win for NASCAR, and, and NASCAR's most popular driver obviously getting the win in a special moment for Chase Elliott and, of course, Chase Elliott fans. So that leaves us, obviously, to our, our next topic, uh, which is Chase Elliott winning at Talladega in a two-lap shootout. Now, I've heard some conversation about this caution that came out. Um, uh, I believe it was Daniel Hemrick that uh, had some engine failures or the car failed, uh, and he was sitting on the infield or on pit road at the racetrack. NASCAR threw a yellow. Look, I don't, want, I don't have a whole lot to say about it. If NASCAR had left the race green, I wouldn't have a problem with that. They threw the caution. I really don't have a huge problem with it. I understand the call they made. I understand it's a safety concern. At the same time, could he have got out the race car and walked on the other side of the pit wall and been fine? Probably. But he was at the end of pit road. I don't really have a problem with, with them throwing the caution. I don't think it majorly changed the outcome of the race. If anything, it stopped a wreck. So I don't have a major problem with that caution like I have some, seen some people uh, explain. Obviously, I don't think it was... I don't know. I mean, it's just it's just something that doesn't bother me too much. So I don't want to get too into detail about that. But let's just talk about Chase Elliott and what he did to win this race. Makes a fantastic move with two laps to go. Just cuts up on the high lane in front of Eric Jones. That was obviously the right move. Had maybe, I don't know, a quarter second to do it and did it at the perfect time not to cause a wreck and not to miss the opportunity to do it. So that's obviously driver talent. You know, Chase Elliott even said in his interview he knew what was going to happen. He was trying to vision what was going to happen uh, going into the final two laps of this race or in the final stretch of this race. And he did that and he visioned it just perfectly to get the win. And that's what I like to see. Driver talent winning at Talladega. He made the right move and still got the win. You look at the top five finishers, really the top six finishers, they all did everything right. And I say this, I kind of go back 
back to the Daytona 500. I said this. I said that this, at the spring Talladega race, it also didn't have a wreck at the end of the race. A fantastic race in the spring as well. Great season for Talladega overall, really. Um, you know, the top three or four, and in this case, probably the top six drivers, did everything right. It just didn't work out, but at least it was those guys that were up front uh, competing for the win that were able to get it. And Chase Elliott uh, is becoming a more experienced driver. You remember he won at Atlanta earlier this year, which is kind of a super speedway pack racing style race now, uh, and was able to get that win. And of course, he won at Talladega in 2019. So that's obviously uh, impressive. By the way, this is Chase Elliott's fifth win of the season. He has won now at a variety of racetracks. He's won at Dover. That was his first win earlier on a Monday afternoon. He's won at Nashville. He won at Atlanta. Like I said, that pack race. He won at Pocono from the disqualification from the front two runners. And then, of course, got the win today at Talladega. So a fantastic year right now for Chase Elliott. And I, when we talk about some of the old school drivers, some of the older drivers in the field that have impressive stats, you know, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, uh, maybe even a few numbers, uh, a few drivers, Kurt Busch. When they get a win, I like to go through their stat sheet can we start doing that with Chase Elliott? He doesn't have a whole lot of numbers, but for his age, he certainly has a lot. And I think we'd start doing that. Second win at Talladega today for Chase Elliott, his first since 2019. His fifth win on this year and his 18th career win for Chase Elliott. And his third win on a super speedway style racetrack, if you want to count Atlanta into that category. So a fantastic uh, career already for Chase Elliott, the fan favorite. Uh, and a championship as well for him, and, and he's the favorite to win a second one this season. So, so Chase Elliott fans have a lot to look forward to right now. Fantastic race, uh, and, and a good move by Chase Elliott. I really enjoyed that race, and um, it was kind of a special moment. Talladega's had some special moments. It looked like Dale Jr. was winning. Uh, the, the, fa the fans just went crazy there when Chase Elliott crossed the finish line. Um, he, he got pushed there by Eric Jones uh, and tried to uh, Blaney tried to make a move on the high side, but. But Chase Elliott blocked it in perfect time, and then the inside lane just couldn't quite get to him. So great win today for Chase Elliott. So definitely a special moment for sure. I'm not a Chase Elliott fan, but I know a special moment when I see one, and today was certainly one. Let's go through the top ten just real quick. Like I said, Chase Elliott got the win. Ryan Blaney did everything right, tried to pull that, uh, that pass on the high lane, but... Kind of like what he did at Daytona earlier this year when he tried to pull the pass on the high line from Austin Cindric and got blocked, got hit in the left front. Same thing happened today for Ryan Blaney. He's always right up there. Probably one of the, if arguably one of the best racers at this type of pack racing style race. He wasn't up there at Atlanta earlier this year, but it was decent. I mean, he didn't really go for the win, but Talladega earlier this year was in the mix. And then, of course, Daytona 500 was in the mix. Uh, he's always in the mix at the end of these uh uh, Daytona Talladega or now Atlanta type races so it's certainly exciting to watch Ryan Blaney he's going to start getting a few more wins I think he's probably going to get a couple Daytona 500s the way he's been running lately uh, so definitely a good day for him uh, he'll take second by the way which puts him uh, uh, 32 points above in the playoff grid Michael McDowell finishing in the third position a uh, pretty good day for him played everything right did everything uh, good he's having probably the best season of his career by far uh, a fantastic season for you know you know looking at his previous seasons but then, of course, you have Ross Chastain ended up finishing fourth. A good points day for him. Another one of those drivers that essentially did everything right. Denny Hamlin, obviously great on these types of racetracks, finishes in the top five. Eric Jones. Eric Jones, once again, a heartbreaker at Talladega. Couldn't pull it off today at Talladega. Uh, he was leading coming to the finish in the spring race and then, of course, uh, was pushing the, the winner this time uh, to the win but couldn't quite get past Chase Elliott there at the end of this one. So uh, a sixth-place finish for Eric Jones. Uh, Ty Gilliland, great run for Ty Gilliland. Stayed up front all day, was able to have, you know, execute on the pit stops, no mistakes uh, for Ty Gilliland and the 38 team, that 38-4 team. It's top 10, 7th. He earned it. Did everything correct. That's a great finish for Ty Gillen, finishing in the 7th position. Daniel Suarez, he's now above the cut line with that. He finished 8th today. Dan, uh, Austin Sendrick, uh, who tends to run up front in these plate races, tend to get in the top 10 a lot. Uh, and, and obviously, your Daytona 500 winner finished ninth, And then Chase Briscoe finishing 10th, another playoff driver. That's That brings us up to the playoff grid. Let's take a look at it. Chase Elliott, the first playoff driver to get a win in this playoffs. We had to get halfway through the playoffs before we finally got it. But Chase Elliott got a win, so he is guaranteed into the next round of the NASCAR playoffs. Ryan Blaney, obviously with a good finish today, the second place finish and the stage points, was able to get uh, 32 points above the cut line. Safe, not guaranteed in. But all he has to do is play it safe. Finishes anywhere in the top 20, he's good. Just don't wreck out in stage one, and Ryan Blaney should be able to advance. By the way, he has won at the Charlotte Road Course where we go next week. Ross Chastain, obviously another one of those drivers, finished fourth today. Great finish for him, 28 points above the cut line. One of the, probably one of the best race car drivers this season in a season that's had a lot of parity, a lot of different winners, a lot of drivers up front, kind of shuffling of the results every week. 
Ross Chastain's been one of the more consistent on the more consistent side, uh, except right before the playoffs. But as the playoffs have started, the speed has come back. So a great uh, run today by Ross Chastain. So obviously third in the playoffs, and he's now 28 points above. Denny Hamlin, 21 points above the cut line. Joey Logano, who some people have winning that championship, finish, uh, is currently 18 points above, uh, which is safe. He's, he's definitely comfortable, but still needs to try to get some stage points next week and get a good finish. And then, of course, you have Kyle Larson, 18 points above. Daniel Suarez, 12 points above uh, the cut line. Like I said, good finish today. Got some stage points. Great run for him. And then Chase Briscoe. And Austin Cindric are tied. Chase Briscoe currently has the tiebreaker, so Briscoe is in on a tie with Austin Cindric, who is below the cut line. So that's obviously interesting. We'll watch that next week to see how that unfolds at a track like the Charlotte Road Course. William Byron, obviously a 25-point penalty. That's really going to hurt him. He can still get in. He's only 11 points below. Definitely ate into that deficit a little bit. 11 points below. I think he has a good shot to get above, but has to try to go for some stage points, has to try to get a good finish. Can't make any mistakes at the Roval, which I don't think he will. He's a, a driver that tends to not make mistakes. If, it, if he doesn't call him somebody else's mess, Byron definitely has a chance to get above the cut line, especially considering who's ahead of him. Austin Cindric, I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be able to get some stage points. Chase Briscoe, I don't know if they're going to have the speed, if those Fords are going to have the speed next week uh, like William Byron will, but we'll see. We'll obviously have to watch it. Christopher Bell has to treat it like a must-win next week. He has won at a road course. He has won at a Roval. He won at the Daytona Road Course back in 2021. Uh, that was his first career win. Uh, he's minus 33. Have to treat it like a must-win next week. If there is a certain kind of crazy scenario where he could get in, that is possible, especially at a track like Charlotte. But you can't rely on that if you're Christopher Bell. You have to strategize as if you're trying to go for the win. Alex Bowman, unfortunately, like I said, he is out this week due to concussion-like symptoms. Uh, and that's kind of with some of the big news lines, some news stories going into this week. Unfortunately, he's 54 below right now. If he comes back next week, he has to, has to treat it like a must win. I hope he comes back next week, but it's not a guarantee. Alex Bowman obviously last right now on the playoff drivers remaining out of the 12 playoff drivers uh, remaining. So like I said, a great race at Talladega. I really enjoyed that race. It was a fun week, but we go to the Roval next week. We go to, I saw the commercial for the road course race uh, next week. It kind of explained it just perfectly. It's like a pinball machine. It looks like a pinball machine and drivers get pinned around a lot. It's a crazy race at the Charlotte Road Course. We've seen time and time again drivers that shoulda, coulda, woulda made it to the next round of the playoffs at this Charlotte Roval cutoff race, not make it due to a mistake, due to getting wrecked coming to the checkered flag. We saw that with Truex and Jimmy Johnson uh, a few years ago. So we'll have to see what happens. We'll have to see what happens next week at the Charlotte Roval. It's going to be exciting. Tune in, like, and subscribe if you like the video. And of course, about Kyle Busch and ultimately not getting the win today. Let's get rowdy.